but you see this broken one? You don't want to count it over here because the cone's in there and it widens these sometimes. Or over here. You want to do it right in the middle here. I'm going out to do a call. A guy said the door opened up a foot off the ground and then just stopped, or less than a foot. It sounds like a broken spring. We'll see when I get there. I brought an opener with me just in case it doesn't have a broken spring. I should be able to, you know, sell a new opener there if there's anything wrong with the opener. These are how you get calls. People can't get out of their garage. They want you to come out. So we'll see when I get there. How you doing? Hey, how garage you doing? door. Hey, uh, so it's not um, going up. It's not going up. You want me to go through? Yeah, come on in. Right. Yeah. I already see your problem. So you got a broken spring up there. Oh, okay. And uh, it wouldn't go up at all. Well, yeah, you don't have to push it yet, but it, it went up a little bit. It was like an inch. And uh, did you hear any loud noises, or did you just? I didn't hear anything. No. So hopefully. We just moved in. Like there was rent for renters. So since I've been here, it's not opened. <laughs> Okay, have you tried to open it? Uh, no. So when he had it, it wasn't opening when he gave no, it. I think I, well, I think it was empty for a while. He, did, he was surprised it didn't open. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to uh, tell him, or do you need to tell him, or? No, yeah, really? he just wanted. I'll pay, but he just wanted to. He, if there's anything, he, he just wanted. To you want to take a picture of that? You yeah. Just want, he just wanted to prove. Um, he knew you're coming out here, but if there's any work required, he wanted to just prove that. So we can call him. Okay. Okay, I got twelve ninety five for this one. He's gonna Venmo, Venmo it. See this one, you know, I had to park over here. You know, so this is the farthest you'll have to walk because it'd be a little bit tight backing in here and get my tools off. So this is what it should look like: your ladder, your toolbox, maybe some WD forty in your impact. And I put one spring over there and one spring over here, standing up. This is a twelve ninety five job. I'm now is. 1224. I'm going to take my time, but we'll see how long it takes me. As I push the button to close the door, then I run over and I gotta help it down. Release this after so nobody comes home and pushes the button while you're working. So I get my impact, stick my bars in there. Loosen this up. The longer the bars are, see these bars? The longer they are, the easier it is to wind them because you have more leverage. These springs here are red. That usually tells you there's a left hand and then the black is a right, but they also have red springs. So you gotta, you gotta be careful. You're, you're not grabbing a red spring thinking it's left. You can have a red spring and a left hand wind, and then it'll be red, only red in here. But it won't be what you're looking for if you need a gold. So they're color coded on a lot of them. But these happen to be gold springs. It, the red tell me it's left, but I always, you know, look at this coil right here where it's cut and it's winding to the left. See this coil? I don't know if we can see it close up here, right there. That's winding to the left. No matter if you look at either end, it's the same way. It's winding to the left counterclockwise. If you look at the right spring, it'll be winding to the right. That's how I know which side they go on, left or right. I don't, I don't rely 100% on them marking it. They can, I've had them where they've made a, a black mark on a left side, so I don't wanna just rely on some spray painting them the wrong color. So you gotta know the difference between them. And uh, that's how you tell. And then over here, you've been questioning, how do you know what springs you need? You, you would come up on the ladder, but you see this broken one? You don't want to count it over here because the cone's in there and it widens these sometimes. Or over here, you want to do it right in the middle here. You would count 10 of these, put a tape measure on it and see what it measures exactly. Like two and a half, these would be two and a half. But if they're a little bit smaller, each one, it'd be like two and an eighth, two and a quarter, two inch. Instead of but these coils are bigger, so they equal more. So that's how you tell what type, what gauge spring you got, what weight it's pulling. It's here they notched around so you fit the drum so it's tight. You can't slide the thing up back and forth the normal way. Normally if the sheetrock was there, you can move it all anywhere you want. 
but they notched around it so the drums in here. You gotta pull this out just for the drum to spin. Otherwise the sheetrock would have been in the way. So now I got the springs on. I'm just gonna tighten this up first. Tighten that. And that now you can move the whole shaft with the spring. And then get your vice grip ready. Then you could take this. Hook it onto the groove here, like that, and just start spinning the whole, whole shaft like that. All right, get your vice grip right here, and you can just snap your vice grip right there. That'll hold that cable on. Then you just gotta go to the other side. Go over here, take this cable right here. I don't know if you can see in here very good, but you can spin this drum freely. You can hook that on, feed it around in, in the first groove, spin it around. Now this one gets a little tighter as you tighten it. So I can't get to the second one, so I'm just tightening that one up for now and I'll tighten the other one up after. I'll just use an open end wrench. See, look, then I can use my light here. And then I can get in there with my open end wrench. That should be enough. Now I'm going to the cables around. Go over to the string. Yeah, they go together nice and neat. Good. So you want the you want the nut to go away from the from where they mounted them. So in case you ever gotta take them off, take the lags out. You don't have to take, these won't be in the way. There's one. Now we go up here, tighten the springs. important to set the cables first because a lot of times when you hit you move the drums hit them back and forth they don't slide they're stuck on this old set screw marks and you don't want the whole shaft moving so if you set the drums like where the springs are you can you can hit them over the old set screw marks the drums will hold them hold them in place you're going to start winding so you're going to go one two Okay, those are quarter pulls, so we're at 10. Anytime I gotta stop, I always make sure it's an even number like that. And I stand to the side of the bar in case the spring breaks. You don't want the bar, if you're in line with it, you can get hit with the bar if it flies out. Done with that, with the spring chains, with a couple of things I'm gonna throw in. Looks like someone didn't put a this strut on the door. They took it off. You see it over here, up there? That metal thing going across. I think they took it off of the door at some point. So I want to put it back on for them. It's 12.51. I think it's taken me, I don't remember what time it was. Was it 12.44? <laughs> Basically, I'm not, the door's open. You can see I just got to fine tune it. Anyway, I'm going to close the door now. Right about here. I'm going to put a vice on the track. There. Then take these lags right here. You want to grab this thing by the middle when you're putting on a strut. You want to get the middle of it, which it looks like right here. Somewhere here is the middle. You can put it up there. Actually, I think it's too short. This is what I, I'm throwing in the servicing of the door. Uh, for all of you that are wondering what door service is, basically, Lube in all the parts, the moving part, the pivot point right here on the hinge, stop it from squeaking. You can spray a little bit over there where the cable is. This bearing, a bit of bearing up in here where the spring goes together, you can just spray it in there. And then I already got those hinges. It's basically it. Tighten up all the nuts. You, you open it up. Look at this door. door basically floats there, balanced. You can open it all the way here. Then what I do here, 
Then I come over here because the rollers get tighter as they go down. Because this track is rubbing up against them. I give that a nice spray so it rolls nice and smoothly there. Spray that bottom roller all the way on the inside of the track, all the way down. And then what I do, this track looks like it's kind of bending out. You can see the how it looks kind of bent. I would just take this and pull in on it. Oh, straighten it up. So now we can hook this back on. Let's run it. Gotta wait till it catches. Let it go down. And now you're gonna have an issue with the camera. Probably this one here. That one looks good. That one I think looks good too. Make sure the cables are on. Cables look good. I may have to reprogram the sensitivity adjustment because sometimes when they start lifting a heavy door, sometimes when they lift a heavy door like that, it, it's too sensitive now. Now it, it, there's resistance, so you have to you have to teach it the new new pressure. I know it's a pressure thing because the door runs really good by hand, so it's something with the opener. I'm going to reprogram the sensitivity. So let's try it right here. Yeah. There's an older one. And then push the button. It'll start going down. And then you gotta, you gotta stop it and run it. Normally it's backed up, so the back of the truck will be right here. So I can just throw everything right back on, but in this rare case, now I gotta walk over to the driveway, which is not, no big deal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps. That's not bad. I double check. Oh yeah, my charger. I plug my charger in over here. That's what I do. You know, I've been doing this too long. I forgot my charger so many times that I hate going back. So me, I make sure of everything. Now we just do the bill. $12.95, they're gonna Venmo it. So uh, that's it. Now, driving away from that job. I just wanna tell you guys that, you know, people wondering if they can do this or not. You know, I'm spoiled and I don't mind doing this kind of work for this kind of money. People that are starting off and they haven't tasted this kind of money, you're not gonna believe it when you start making it. So I'm just spoiled, so don't let my uh, unenthusiastic manner decide for you because I used to do this when I was younger and I'd, I would like, a, I'd work till 11 o'clock every night. I love doing this kind of work. It's just that, uh, you know, I'm 60 years old now and I'm still going out, and, you know, I'd rather do this than sit at home or, you know, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna go to a restaurant and get fat, keep eating. You know, there's really nothing to do. Go hit some golf balls. That's really what retirement is. I mean, you can travel, but now even traveling is hard to do. It really, what you guys should, the reason I'm telling you that is because don't wait around for these kind of, the, the, you know, the government to, to give you handouts and all that because you're waiting for your social security or your disability. I had a guy that worked for me in fact, he probably did that spring change the last time we were there, or he did work there. He actually, he worked for the city too, a city, and he was a street sweeper in the middle of the night. He did that since we were like out of high school. And he wanted to stay there because he wanted the city to pay him his retirement when he retires. He retired when he was around, I think he was like 58. I think he retired early. Within a few months after his retirement, you know, he was, he was watching all the football games every weekend. He was flashing all the beer in his refrigerator, you know, kind of like tailgating, but doing it at home. You know, and within three months, he was dead. So you want to work for a company, get up every day religiously, go in and think you're going to have this great life after. I think he started at 2 and he got off at like 11 or 12. And he, uh, he worked for me from 12 to 6 or 7 every night. Then he'd go home and he, he was always working, this guy. And... It, he worked himself right into the grave and he's only 58 years old, 59 years old. What did all that mean? All that, uh, you know, working old school way and putting in your retirement. So if you work for yourself, you can wake up when you want, you can make good money so you feel good all the time about your job. Nobody's telling you what to do. You don't have all the politics at work where people are telling you and you're just a number to them. People are writing you up and reporting you and then they're saying good morning to you the next day. Yeah, I mean, it's all a garbage type of 
Yeah, I can't believe people do that for a living. So you could do this, make way more. I just made thirteen hundred dollars. Took me an hour, and I don't. I didn't have to wake up early. I'm gonna go do another call in a couple hours. I got someone, someone else that just called me in between, and I'll probably make two thousand today. How long is it gonna take a regular person to ser seriously get two thousand dollars? And then they gotta wait all week or all month to get paid. So. And then once you get paid, you owe it all out anyway. So at least here you get paid on a daily basis. If you keep your daily average at a thousand bucks a day, which is really easy to do, that's thirty thousand a month. I mean, where, where are you going to make thirty thousand a month? So that's four hundred fifty thousand a year. That's doing like one call. Do five, six calls a day and watch how big your 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 account grows. And you're not going to be tired. I'm not tired right now. I mean, that was a hard one too, and I'm not tired. So that one, they, you know, the sheetrock was in the way and all that stuff. The garage wasn't very clean, but still, it, it wasn't. When you know how to do them and you know exactly what you're there to do, they're so easy to do. And when you're young, you love that stuff. So anybody who's young in their 20s, 30s, even, and all that, this is an exciting business to get into. You'll love getting calls. You'll be jacked up. You, you'll be, you'll feel like you hit the lottery. My advice to anybody thinking about taking this class, don't listen to all these people out there, what you should do and this and that. that you're never gonna do it the other way and no one's ever gonna hire you in this business. These people in this business want all the money for themselves. They don't want you coming in, training you, and then you quit and you start running ads and taking their job. They're just not gonna do it. And if they do it, you're gonna sign a non-compete clause, 100%. That means if you do any jobs and they find out, they can sue you and, and get money out, and then you'll be working for them and paying your lawsuit. And then you got to get attorneys. You don't want to go down that route. You could do this the easy, smart way to keep all the money. You can learn this trade, learn the basic fundamentals. We know exactly why we're tightening things, how many times we're turning it, where to stand, everything safety. And you're not, we're not t explaining that to you in these little videos we're showing you, but we teach you all this stuff. So when you go there, you just repeat. Yeah, that's all you got to do is keep repeating the same thing over and over on every job and you'll keep making the same money it's not going to be you're going to go to a job and go oh well i might not be able to fix it yeah you will be able to fix it once you know the the rhythm of how garage doors work what things come first you know how far to measure down which cable to wrap first how many turns to put on it you know which is left and right all that stuff you put it all together we make it simple for you you go out and just repeat that's all they did the guy who put the door in he did exactly what what we're replacing so it all worked the same every single time it's like making a mcdonald's hamburger they got it all down you know they squirt the tomato pickle blah blah blah, blah. it's like an assembly line that's how garage doors are you don't go there and think you're not going to be able you think mcdonald's says to themselves hey what if we don't know how to make a hamburger i mean that's the same thing it's i know it sounds intimidating to you now because you have no clue on how to do these but once you know how to do them and people call you and you just got to go do that and you get this kind of money you're gonna tell yourself like this is like I'm so glad I did this you can do this business and relax do what I do you can run it you can run crews all day long it'll cost you more in advertising because you got to keep everybody busy but I'm not like that anymore I used to do that I had eight guys working for me I made great money back then now I don't really need to make great money. I like doing it, but I don't want to be busy all day. If I make a thousand a day, I'm good. My, my kids make probably between two and three thousand each a day. One of them's probably making five grand a day. Another one I know is he made, said he made fifty six thousand last month. And he doesn't even advertise. He advertises on next door free advertising. He's always busy. Every time I talk to him, he's on his way to another job. And he loves doing it. This is a great business whether you want to be busy, you want to just do one job a day. It's easy. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs their garage door, some kind of work on it. And they've all been meaning to do it, but they didn't know who to call. So where, wherever I go, people ask me, oh, you do garage doors? And, or if I tell them I do garage doors for whatever reason, you know, I could go to the bank, I could go anywhere and you know, talk to people, hey, I know you, this and that, and I do garage doors. Once you tell them that, you know, you got a customer now for life. So you can't say that with any other business. Most people don't want to talk to people, but when they know a garage door guy, for some reason, they want to they want to keep your number because they, they know they've had issues before and they want someone to call when it happens. So you people that, that think you can get something better, 
You're fooling yourself. You're never going to get a trade like the garage door trade. It's the best trade to be in. It's got service. Like a lot of trades don't have service. Like if you're a painter, not much service in that. Garage door is the best. You back right up to the door. You do the repair right there and you leave with a check. Anyway, so I've been telling you guys, you should get into this. All you people that signed up, good luck to you. You guys have been out there. I've gotten great feedback from a lot of you guys. There's so much room in this in this industry for more technicians. Like the, every technician is super busy, pushes jobs off all the time because they can't get to them. And it, whenever you're in a business like that or an industry, that means they need more people to fulfill them. They're running it full capacity every company every day in the garage door business so we'll work with you on getting you into your own business we'll help you we'll tell you all the steps to take by within 30 40 days you'll be out with the truck you get your tools you get your business license you start running ads and we'll tell you exactly what to say what to do we can help you with your logos get get a receipt book and uh Get to work. People start calling you, go out there. You, you, you don't feel confident until you're set up. Then you feel like you could go there and give a receipt and put a sticker up. You feel like you have confidence, like you're a company. Right now, you don't feel like, you'll feel like, what would I do if someone called? Uh, I don't know what to do. You know, I mean, that's how you'll feel. But once you load up your truck with this, all the parts you need, or you have a truck, you, maybe you can advertise on the truck. You don't have to. That guy I just seen didn't advertise on his truck. But you could, that's a good idea, because people then see you all over the place. You're ready to go. You mean, then all you gotta do is start booking calls when they call. Going out there, charging people. We even give you the price sheets. Sign up, go to www.garagedoortrainingschool.com. Get signed up. Don't worry about the price. When you hear the price, you think it's so high. $1,499 to learn a trade is ridiculously low. And you get to do it at your own pace, your own convenience. Most of the places you go now, they're going to be higher because of the pandemic. They used to be like 40000 Plus, going in there, you have to rent a hotel. It's going to cost you another five grand. Then you got to, you know, eat out every night. And then once you leave there, most of those places, they say adios. They don't even talk to you after that. If you have any issues, you're on your own. You should have been paying attention. With ours, you get a lifetime membership to the class. You're getting something for $1,499. One damn service charge, just like I just did. Let's call it two. So two service calls and you're, it's all paid. You got your, all your money back. You guys that are on the fence about wanting to do this or learning a trade, period. We actually have the only online trade school which is effective. We've had so many people going into their own business. I've changed a lot of lives by doing this. A lot of people are like, they tell me they're indebted to me for the rest of their life and they can't believe how much money they're making. They love this business. They're cut out for this business. We have guys sending me a bottle of whiskey and all this stuff, blue label or something. I asked him what's blue label and he sent me a picture of it. The best way to do it is to learn the right way, learn for inexpensive. Just, you know, one or two service calls, you can pay yourself back. You could practice with those two and you're already paid back for the whole course. And then you still get access to the course. You get a lifetime membership to the course. So if you forget something ever, you can look back and they're all labeled. If you forget how to reset cables, I'll just give you an example. You can go right to reset cables and watch a little video thing there and right out in the driveway too. Like you go to your truck and watch it on your phone and go, okay, now I remember and go back in. Just that alone, this class is worth it. So garage door people also take our course. You know, they see some of the stuff we do that they didn't know you can do. So they want to learn more of our tricks. So they just take the course because they know the money they make, $1,499, that's, that's really nothing when you start making the money. So I know for some people they don't have the money, but I would do whatever I can to get the money and I would get signed up and start making the good money. And then you'll see that it's really not that much money that you're spending for this course. You'll have a different attitude towards it. Uh, once you sign up for the course, www.garagedoortrainingschool.com, you'll actually have access to the price sheets and you can laminate them, put them together and then it looks like a an official price sheet. Uh, they'll do it for like $2.50. The ones you guys are gonna be using, that's what I charged. And you can go do another one. Like I'm on the way to another one right now. A lot of times just the remotes and things, the extras that you sell them, like the keypads when you're there. A lot of times just those extra things I charge covers the cost of all the parts, even the doors. And then basically what I charge them for the doors is all clear. So this is something you guys will have to figure out when you're out there doing it, but it's exciting to do. I mean, you're making that kind of money doing 
very little. I'll probably get another service as well today. So if I do anything else, it's just more money on top of it. So it's not hard to make a million a year doing repairs and not working hard in this business. And when I was younger, I did all that. I'm not doing it now. I'm just gonna show you guys so you guys learn and are able to appreciate how much money you can make. And there's not that many guys doing it. So every door that breaks, every spring that breaks, every cable that comes off, anything goes wrong with a garage door, and you're in one area, you're, you, even if you have five people in an area, there's too much work for five people. So you're gonna be getting calls. Everyone who gets in this business does it very well. So uh, if you wanna learn this business, the most inexpensive way to learn it, you can learn a trade where you make incredible amounts of money. Now that we got this thing affordable for everybody, which the price is gonna go up soon, $14.99 to learn this. You can, in one job, garage door opener, an hour's work, you get to pay for your whole education all you people going to college and all that for six years taking loans out and you're going and sitting in a classroom every day even if you're an air conditioning guy they're not just going to send you out the only real job to do where you can do it yourself and learn as you're going too and it's we teach you the basic fundamentals all you got to do is run ads go out there when they call you charge good money and you, you'll figure it out because the, the amount of stuff we teach you you're going to remember once you get there and you're gonna know how to do all this stuff. So I know it might feel intimidating, but you know what takes the, the pressure off on this business too is they want you to come out. They're like waiting for you. You're like an ambulance or something showing up. It, it's almost like people take their garages for granted. They don't have any clue how they work. They just push a button and it opens. But the minute something goes wrong with their door, the minute they break, they're lost at sea or something. They don't know what the hell to do. And you're you're like the only boat coming by. They're so they don't care. They just want they want to be rescued. That's kind of how you feel when you go to these jobs. A lot of them. So you get ready for that. It's a welcoming feeling. Some people you, you're more cautious, but I'd say 75% of people you go to are just they don't really care. One guy just told me he he changes rollers and services a door, and he charges $2,700. He said he does it all the time. I guess he said he said he's a good salesman, but it, it had nothing to do with salesmen. It, what it is is these people don't know, and they think that's what it costs, and their door is a major part of their house, and it's not working, and they just pay it. And I, I'm not saying for you to go charge that, but 99% of the time, you get great money for what you do in the garage door business, and if they say yeah, then, then you're doing it. If they say no, then, then you can always lower it and say you'll do it for this or you'll see if you can get them a discount and then you can lower it. It's a great trade to learn. It's exciting to learn it too. The, the, the fundamentals of a garage door, the way that it operates. Once you learn all that stuff, you feel smarter than the guy next to you. So anyway, I hope to see you on the next. Talk to you later.